In this lecture, we will begin a new topic namely the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Now there are a number of different field effect transistors such as junction field effect transistor, the metal semiconductor field effect transistor and in recent times there have been other field effect transistors such as heterostructure field effect transistors and so on. The MOSFET is one of the primary field effect transistors. So we will discuss in detail about this particular device which is based on the operation of the MOS junction or capacitor. Let us see what is the goal of our discussions on this topic. Now first we will try to explain this current voltage characteristics. These characteristics are similar to the output characteristics of a bipolar transistor. The only thing is here the nomenclature for the terminals is a little different from that of bipolar transistor. So for example, look at the biasing arrangement shown here. This is a symbolic representation of the MOS FET. We will explain why the symbol is used for to represent the MOS FET device. But before we do that, let us understand the various uh, terminals. This is the so called drain terminal which is analogous to the collector terminal of the MOS transistor. The input terminal is the gate which is analogous to the base of the bipolar transistor. This terminal is the source which is analogous to the emitter of the bipolar transistor. Now you see one difference between bipolar transistor and the field effect transistor. You also have what is called the bulk or the substrate terminal which was not there in bipolar transistor. This fourth terminal is the so called bulk or substrate terminal. You can apply a voltage between this bulk and the source terminal that will introduce what we call as body effect something that was discussed in the context of MOS capacitor. So though we can apply a voltage between this terminal that is this bulk and the source in this particular biasing arrangement the voltage applied has been 0. So bulk to source voltage or substrate to source voltage here is 0. So these characteristics which you see on the left hand side here where you are plotting the drain current as a function of drain to source voltage. So what is being done here is that you keep the gate to source voltage constant but more than the threshold voltage. Then you get a current ID, you vary the VDS from 0 to large values to see how the ID changes keeping VGS constant. When you do that, you trace one of these particular family of curves. So for example, this curve is traced by keeping VGS equal to 3 volts and then varying VDS from 0 to 20 volts. Then you change your VGS to different values say 4 volts and again sweep the VDS and that is how you get this entire family of curves. Now, it is to be noted that these characteristics are shown for an n channel transistor okay so n channel transistor is a device which in which the current is carried by electrons in such a transistor the drain current is into the drain terminal and it drain to source voltage is positive therefore in this case 
you have positive currents and positive voltages. You can see very clearly there are two regions of operation that can be identified here which are separated by this dotted line somewhat analogous to the bipolar transistor. The only difference is that this region to the left of the dotted line which was called the saturation region in the context of bipolar transistor is given a different name here in the MOS transistor. This is called the ohmic region or the resistive region. This region is quite wide okay it is much wider than what you had in bipolar transistor recall in bipolar transistor this region was about 0.7 volts or something like that whereas here you can see the region goes on increasing from low vgs to high vgs and it is of the order of a few volts beyond this dotted line to the right of this is what you have a region where the current is almost constant and analogous to the bipolar transistor. So, here this is the so called active region in the context of MOS transistor this region is also referred to as the saturation region because the current saturates. So, the saturation region in bipolar transistor means the region to the left of the dotted line whereas in the MOS transistor it means the region to the right of the dotted line. So, we will also see why this kind of confusion exists about the nomenclature. In this uh, characteristics we have not shown the breakdown region something we had shown for the MOS uh, the bipolar transistor we are not showing in the MOS transistor. So, our main purpose will be to explain these DC characteristics. Now, from the DC characteristics you can also get the small signal equivalent circuit okay? because when you use the transistor as an amplifier you are going to operate it in small signal condition. The equivalent circuit for that particular case that is for small signal operations is very similar to the hybrid pi equivalent circuit of the bipolar transistor. Now, you do not have an H parameter equivalent circuit for the MOS transistor. This is because if you look at the diagram here you really do not have any input current voltage characteristics for this device because there is no gate current DC gate current flowing in the device. The gate is isolated from the channel through which the current flows. So, the channel current flows through the uh, from the drain to the source along this line and this channel is isolated from the gate. So, therefore, there is no DC gate current. So, you do not have input characteristics of input current versus input voltage. That being the case you do not have a parameter like the beta of a bipolar transistor which is a gain from the base of the bipolar transistor to the collector of the bipolar transistor current gain. Okay? So, output current by input current that is what is beta whereas, in the MOS transistor there is no input current input current is 0 for the DC case. Therefore, you do not have an H parameter equivalent circuit and you only have an equivalent circuit which looks somewhat like the hybrid pi equivalent circuit of the bipolar transistor. Let us see what this equivalent circuit looks like. The equivalent circuit looks like this. So, here this is also a transconductance based equivalent circuit. So, MOS transistor for small single purposes is a transconductance amplifier and similar to the bipolar case you have the capacitances at the input then you have a capacitance here between the input and output here gate is the input drain is the output and source is the common terminal. In analogy to the common emitter bipolar transistor case where emitter is the common terminal base is the input terminal and collector is the output terminal. Then you have a resistance here between drain and source and you also have a capacitance you do not have a resistance at the input that is the only difference. So, we will try to explain the various parameters of this equivalent circuit. To do this we will be proceeding in the following manner. So, here is a very brief outline of our discussion on MOS field effect transistor.
So, first we will give a very brief historical account of how this device has come into existence. Then we will consider the device structure and how it is fabricated. Then we will see the common source DC current voltage characteristics. Then we will see the small signal equivalent circuit and finally, we will see the differences between a MOSFET and a BJT. So, let us begin with a brief history of how this device came into being. I would like to take you back to the lecture on the bipolar junction transistor, which discussed with the history of bipolar junction transistor. We can start from there. If you recall, we talked about a patent on solid state triode as early as 1925, wherein you had a semiconductor block here and a metal here. This was a diagram in the patent and the idea was that if you apply a voltage to the metal with respect to semiconductor, a field will be created which will attract carriers to the surface of the semiconductor and therefore, modulate the surface conductivity. Now, in this region of enhanced carrier concentration, the conductivity will be small and therefore, if you apply a voltage to this between these two points and superimpose a longitudinal field here in the semiconductor, then this field will carry the current from positive terminal to the negative terminal and this current can therefore, be modulated by this electric field, which will change the concentration of carriers here. So, modulation of this current in this direction by a field in this direction, that was the idea of a solid state triode or a solid state amplifier. In fact, this is essentially the field effect transistor idea. Then when people started working on this idea for about two decades, they could not make this device work when they tried to realize in practice and when they were analyzing the reasons for their failure, they were doing an experiment on a semiconductor block and they had put two probes in close proximity and when they monitored the currents in these two circuits, they found this current was linked to this current and that is how they discovered the basic transistor action of the bipolar junction transistor. This was in 1948. Now, after the discovery of this transistor whose principle was much different from the principle of the solid state triode, people forgot about this solid state triode as such because this was a very good amplifying device that they had discovered. So, they went on with it until in 1960. Another new idea was invented and that was the integrated circuit. In fact, this particular idea of integrated circuit is supposed to be a very revolutionary idea of this of the previous century. That is why the person who was involved in this invention, in fact there were two inventors, Kilby and Noyce of which Kilby was given a Nobel Prize later, about 40 years later, right, in this particular century, beginning of this century for this idea. In fact, he was the only engineer to have been given a Nobel Prize in physics because this particular engineering invention of the integrated circuit in which later on people developed the idea of miniaturization of the various devices to integrate more and more devices on the same plane. And this miniaturized device has given rise to lot of new physics. So, very low dimensional devices has given rise to lot of new physics because of which the inventor of the integrated circuit was given a Nobel Prize because his idea has led to so much of new physics and so much of new 
research related to various physical phenomena. So, coming back to the integrate circuit, the idea was that you have a plane in which you can make number of different devices and interconnect them. Now, this is the same idea as the idea of a printed circuit board. That is what you do on a printed circuit board. You put different devices and then you interconnect them, solder wires and so on. So, here it was exactly an analogy to the idea of printed circuit board, but here what was suggested was that all these devices be made simultaneously on a piece of semiconductor. So, this is a top view and this is a cross section. So, different devices being made simultaneously in this semiconductor. And then they will also be interconnected simultaneously. So, in other words, a simultaneous processing of all the devices okay, to build a circuit on a single plane. This concept is different from the concept of PCB where you make different devices, discrete devices individually, then you put all these devices and then you put the connecting wires. In contrast to this idea, here in integrated circuit, you are going to put all the devices at the same time okay? and then all the devices will be interconnected at the same time. So, the various processes related to all the different devices, thousands of devices take place at the same time. That is the idea of an integrated circuit. And the inventor proposed that if you adopt this approach to make circuits, then your size will be small, the reliability will be very high and also the speed of interconnection, uh, the speed of uh, operation of the circuit and so on can be increased tremendously. So, once this idea of integrated circuit was proposed, then it was found that the bipolar junction transistor was not so much suitable for this particular idea. Though nowadays you do have integrated circuits based on bipolar transistors, but definitely the MOS field effect transistor is more suitable for integration and for integrated circuit. That is why the most popular integrated circuit today is the CMOS, that is the complementary MOS device. So, that is when people realized that if you try to implement this idea of the solid state triode directly in a semiconductor and if you are successful in it, that particular device will be more suitable than the BJT for integration. Now, because of a lot of work that went on on the BJT, people had perfected the making of a insulator on silicon. Okay? This process of making an insulator on silicon was perfected, which was the key to the realization of this particular solid state triode. And so, this particular device structure called the MOSFET then became realizable after 1960. That is after about an additional decade of work on this particular device. By the time the integrated circuit was invented, the idea of the solid state triode could be realized in practice. So, the idea was realized in practice as follows. This was a structure that was analogous to this solid state triode, which was realized in practice. So, you have a silicon semiconductor and on this you grow an silicon dioxide layer which is of high quality. The interface is very good, silicon dioxide silicon interface provided you maintain certain conditions. Now, this we had discussed a little bit in the context of MOS capacitor. On the top of this you put a gate, a metal. And then here you have electrodes which are made using doped regions. So, we, let us say we have p type silicon to start with. So, now you can see the analogy between this figure and this device. So, this semiconductor is this, this metal is this. And here between the metal and the semiconductor, 
there was vacuum. So, instead of vacuum, you have this insulator, silicon dioxide, dielectric. You need contacts on the both sides, these are the contacts on both sides of the semiconductor. So, now what happens is when you apply a voltage to this particular terminal with respect to the substrate, let us assume the substrate to be common, then electrons are attracted. Let us say you apply positive voltage, you know from the theory of MOS capacitors that electrons will be attracted and you will create an inversion layer of electrons here. Now, this inversion layer can be used for transferring current from this terminal to this terminal. So, in fact, if you want to see analogy between this and this, then this voltage is applied with respect to this instead of the substrate. So, you could do that here, you could apply a voltage here between these two and then you have to apply a voltage between these two. So, in fact, here the voltage is with this polarity and that is how you get a current and you modulate this current between these two by changing this particular voltage. The substrate is also there, in fact in practice the substrate is also connected to a terminal. Okay? So, either this is grounded which means it will be connected here like this or you can connect a power supply between this and this that issue we will discuss later, but this is the device which is a direct translation of this idea. So, this was a so called MOS field effect transistor. So, after 1960, people quickly started concentrating on the MOS field effect transistor that is this particular device and they perfected it and then started an era of different kinds of circuits on this particular device. Now, let us see what are the kinds of MOSFET that are possible. Once we know this is the basic structure, clearly here the current flows because of electrons. So, therefore, this is an n channel MOSFET. In analogy to this, you can have a p channel MOSFET. If you replace this n regions by p regions and replace this p type silicon substrate by n type silicon substrate and of course, you change the polarities, then you will have operation using a p channel MOSFET. Now, apart from the channel type that is n or p channel, you also have another classification for MOSFETs that is normally on and normally off. So, MOSFETs can be n channel or p channel and further each of these devices can be normally on or normally off. This normally on device is also referred to as enhancement type device. Whereas, I am sorry, this normally on device is referred to as depletion type device. While the normally off device is referred to as enhancement type device. Now, let us understand the meaning of these terms normally on and normally off. For this purpose, let us look at the device structure and its operation in little bit more detail. So, this is an n channel MOSFET. Let us name the various terminals here. This is the gate, this is the substrate. Now, we shall call the substrate as the bulk. The reason is substrate and source both have letters starting with S. So, when you use symbols 
with the starting letter to denote the particular terminal, there will be a confusion between substrate and source because both have S as the starting letters. Therefore, we use the word bulk to represent the substrate. So, B stands for bulk. Then how do you name these two terminals? Now, for this purpose, you recognize the fact that it is a symmetric device. That is supposing I call this as source and this as drain, I could call this terminal as source and this terminal as drain. Now, how do you decide which is source and which is drain? So, it depends on the polarity of the voltage applied. So, let us put the polarities of the various voltages. So, this is the gate with respect to this. Supposing we use this as the common point. Okay. So, you are applying a positive gate voltage. You must apply a positive gate voltage in an in channel device because you want to attract electrons. You want to create an inversion layer which will carry the current from this terminal to this terminal. Please note that you should avoid any current through the substrate because a current flowing through the substrate or across the substrate cannot be controlled by gate. It is only the inversion layer charge that is controlled by the gate and unless you can control the current by the gate, you really do not have a triode or an amplifying device. Okay? The current should be controlled by gate. So, this is the inversion layer. To form this inversion layer, this should be positive with respect to this. Of course, this should be positive with respect to this also. Now, you have a choice of connecting a power supply to the bulk between source and bulk. So, you can either connect a negative supply or a zero bias between source uh, this terminal and the bulk terminal. We will now explain why this is called the source. For simplicity, let us assume this is shorted or this is zero. Now, to pass a current, there should be a voltage drop between this and this terminal. Now, clearly, I cannot apply a negative voltage to this terminal with respect to this because if I apply negative voltage here, then between substrate and this terminal also there will be a negative voltage. Right? This will be positive, this will be negative because we have connected this here. That means there will be a forward bias across this junction which is not correct because if you have a forward bias, a large current will flow and then that current which is coming in this terminal cannot be controlled by the gate. So, that current is of no use as far as our main purpose is concerned to use the device as an amplifier. So, therefore, it means that in this arrangement, if I choose this as the common terminal, this voltage should always be positive with respect to this terminal. So, let us apply that voltage. Now, once this voltage is positive, you know that current always flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal. So, this is the common terminal, which means the current will flow into the terminal. This is a conventional current that is a current because of positive charge. Now, the electron current on the other hand will flow from negative terminal to positive terminal. So, the electrons are flowing from this terminal to this terminal. That means, this terminal is acting like a source of electrons. That is why this terminal is called the source and this terminal is draining all the electrons okay, which are being supplied from the source. That is why this is called the drain. Now, with this operation, you can understand what is the meaning of a normally off device and a normally on device. The question is, how much voltage do you have to apply here? Now, this voltage is called the VGS, gate to source voltage. This voltage is called the VDS. How much voltage you must apply here? So, that the inversion layer forms. Now, in the context of MOS capacitor, we have explained that the inversion layer forms only beyond a threshold voltage. Now, in this particular uh, simple circuit, please note that gate to source voltage is the same as gate to bulk voltage because source and bulk are shorted. So, we can assume this VGS also as VG. V 
Vg B because S and B are both shorted. So, in other words, we can connect up the discussion here that we are having to the MOS capacitor discussion which we had. So, this VGS should be greater than the threshold voltage of the device so that you have an inversion layer. So, VGS greater than Vt. Now, the question is what is Vt? If the Vt is positive, then you will have to apply a voltage more positive than Vt. So, therefore, you will have to apply a non-zero voltage to create the inversion charge. In such a case, if you do not have any voltage applied or if the gate through source voltage is 0, you do not have any channel here. Okay? You do not have any channel here if this gate to source voltage is 0. So, there is no conduction between these points or there is no current. So, this is a so called drain current. So, if I d is 0 for V g s is 0, then this is called a normally off device. Okay? No current device is off when there is no gate voltage. So, no gate source voltage this particular condition is called a normal condition. Gate source. So, in the normal condition the device is off. On the other hand, if I d is non-zero for gate source voltage equal to 0, then this is called a normally on device. This is normally off. So, this condition will be true if V t is less than 0 and this condition will be true if V t is greater than 0. Now, obviously, this is a discussion for n channel device. So, when V t is less than 0, that means even when V g s is equal to 0, you will still have a channel because 0 is more than in any negative quantity. So, V g s equal to 0 will be greater than threshold condition and therefore, you will have a channel even when there is no gate to source voltage. Now, how can V t of an n channel device be negative? You know that from the theory of MOS capacitor, the threshold voltage depends on the flat band voltage and the flat band voltage in turn depends on the work function difference between the gate and substrate and also the fixed oxide charge. So, V f b is given by this formula. Now, this V f b can be tailored if you can alter any of these two terms. In practice, you can change this term. There are ways of changing the term corresponding to QF. Instead of changing the QF itself, that is the interface fixed charge, you can add additional charges at the interface by doping. And these charges can be of either positive or negative polarity, depending on the type of doping, whether it is acceptor type or donor type. So, not only by changing the QF, but by adding additional charges here. So, we can call this QI because normally these additional charges because of dopant are added by a process of implantation. Now, Q i can be positive or negative in polarity depending on the doping. These charges are created at the interface. So, you create a very thin doped layer here at the interface and that will give you this particular modification of the term and that is how you can control the V f b. Now, by controlling the V f b, you can control the V t. So, that is how you can get both positive and negative V t's. Okay? Now, whatever we have discussed for n channel applies for P channel also in a analogous manner. That is, if you consider a P channel device, I leave this for you to work out in detail. I will simply mention the points. 
then for a normally off device v t is less than 0 and for a normally on device v t is greater than 0. Again the change in the threshold voltage is obtained by changing the flat band voltage okay, v f p. Now apart from normally on and normally off device classification there is another classification and that is any of these devices can be either surface channel or buried channel. So here for example this normally off device could be surface channel or it could be buried channel. This obviously applies to each of these devices. So we can abbreviate surface channel as SC and buried channel as BC. The enhancement type device is abbreviated E and depletion type device is abbreviated D. Okay. So now what are the surface channel and buried channel type of devices? Basically these nomenclatures refer to the location of current flow. For example, look at this particular MOSFET. If the current flow is because of inversion layer here, then the inversion layer is attracted to the interface and therefore is right next to the interface. So all the carriers are pressing against the interface. In other words, the current flow will be at the interface or at the surface of the semiconductor. So the interface is also referred to as the surface of this semiconductor. right? So therefore, if the current flow is through an inversion layer, then it is a surface channel device. On the other hand, as we explained, you can change the threshold voltage by changing the flat band voltage, which in turn can be changed by creating a thin doped layer. So for example, if you create a thin doped layer of donors or n type material here, in order to create change the threshold voltage, then the current flow will not be right at the interface. In fact, it will be distributed over this doped layer. So it would be at the interface as well as in the bulk that is inside this doped layer. In fact, most of the current flow will be away from the interface. So then the current flow is said to be buried under the interface. It is not at the interface but buried inside. Okay. So therefore the device will then be called the buried channel device in such a case. So whenever you have a doped layer connecting between source and drain, the device becomes a buried channel device. If you do not have a doped layer, then it becomes a surface channel device because the channel is, is created by inversion layer carriers. Now sometimes there is a confusion among students about buried channel, surface channel, depletion type and enhancement type. Many times students think whenever there is a doped layer between source and drain, then the device is always depletion type. So buried channel and depletion type devices are identical. This is what the students think. This is actually not correct. This is very clearly shown here by this classification. So even a normally off device can be buried channel or a normally on device can be surface channel. It all depends on how you are adjusting your threshold. Okay? That is, is your threshold being adjusted by adjusting the QF or is it being adjusted by having implantation. Okay? So you can have a situation where you have a doped layer here of donors and that doped layer is totally depleted at threshold. I am sorry, totally depleted for gate source voltage equal to 0. Then to open the conduction channel between source and drain, you will have to undeplete this doped layer. Okay? So in practice, a buried channel device can be both normally off or normally on and surface channel device also can be normally off or normally on. 
So, this classification of devices one must remember this kind of a classification is not there in bipolar transistors. So, you have either n type bipolar transistor or n p n device or you have a p n p device ok that is the only classification whereas here you have normally on normally off and surface and buried channel. So, in fact one can show this using abbreviations very easily. So, this is the MOSFET you can have either n type or p type each of these can be enhancement or depletion and each of this devices further can be either surface channel or buried channel. Okay. So, these are all the different types of MOSFETs we have. Now, having discussed the various types of devices and seen broadly what is the device structure, let us understand the symbol of the MOSFET also. Now, let us look at the structure of an internal device and correlate the structure to the symbol. So, you have the gate, then you have the channel. Now, if this is a normally off device, then the channel will not be connected between source and drain when there is no gate source voltage and such a case the channel is shown by a dotted line. So, if the channel is shown by a dotted line it is a normally off device. Now, you have the source and drain terminals this is the gate source and drain of course, you can have this as drain and that as source that is also possible. Okay. Now, whether normally on or normally off you have indicated using the dotted line or solid line here for the channel. Now, how do you indicate the type of the device that is where is it n channel or whether it is p channel. Now, that is indicated as follows you see if this is an n channel device as it is here then the channel will be n type in which case there is what is called an induced n p junction here. if this is made of inversion layer there is an induced NP junction, if it is a doped layer then it is a NP junction created, but in either case there is an NP junction. Now, you can use a diode to show that NP junction. So, in this case since the channel is N type and the substrate is P type the bulk to channel diode is P n for an N type device channel is N and bulk or substrate is P. So, that is why the diode symbol is like this P n. So, therefore, the arrow indicates the type of the cha channel. The dotted or solid line indicates the normally on or normally off nature of the device. So, this is the symbol for a normally on uh, sorry normally off n channel device. Now, how would you draw the symbol of a normally off n channel device? I am sorry, how will you draw the symbol of a normally on n channel device? So, normally on n channel device would be you change this dotted line to a solid line. So, then this is normally on. So, this symbol for example, indicates a normally on device because this line is solid and it indicates a p channel device because channel is p and substrate is n p n that is the direction of the diode. Okay. So, this is a p channel normally on device. So, this is how you build up the symbols for the various types of devices. There is no differentiation between buried channel and surface channel devices as far as the symbol is concerned. Right? The symbol only indicates whether it is normally on or normally off and it indicates whether it is n channel or p channel. 
now depending on the process employed okay and depending on the device structure you will get a buried channel or surface channel device so that is not shown in the symbol now after this we will discuss the essential fabrication steps for creating this particular device structure after discussion of the fabrication steps we will take up the characteristics so mosfet fabrication we will be discussing the steps for a n channel mosfet which is made on a p channel substrate you can construct the sequence of steps for p channel mosfet in a similar manner also we will be discussing the essential steps actual number of steps is rather large okay so we will be discussing only the very important steps here so we start with a p type substrate and then on the top of this we grow a thick silicon dioxide layer so this is of the order of a micron after growing the silicon dioxide layer we isolate those regions where we will make the transistor so this is one micron thick oxide by lithography we have defined this particular regions where we will make the p channel uh, sorry the n channel transistor now the next step is to grow a thin very high quality oxide that will be used as the gate oxide so the thickness of this oxide depends on the design of the mosfet it can vary anywhere between 100 to 500 angstroms in present day mosfets in fact people are going to below 100 angstroms now after this particular oxide that is called the gate oxide is done so this is the gate oxide as against this this particular silicon dioxide is called the field oxide so after this is done what we do is we deposit the polysilicon which is used for making the electrode on the gate so this is the polysilicon now we need to define the gate region here so this is done by lithography so that is the next step so here this is the polysilicon gate we'll just write it as poly and this is the field oxide and this is the gate oxide now notice that here in the lithography what is done is first we etch this polysilicon 
to the required dimension. So, polycon silicon is removed from other regions and then we are etching the oxide. So, there are two steps here, two etching steps which uh, involve first etching the polysilicon to the required dimension and then etching the gate oxide. So, that is something as follows. So, here if you see you have to first etch this polysilicon up to this much distance. Okay. So, when you do that for example, the structure would look something like this. I am drawing in a small scale just to show the idea of creating this gate. So, this is the polysilicon, it has been etched to the gate dimension and now you are going to etch the oxide in the remaining portions. So, it is something like this. So, that is what you see here the blown up portion. Now, this polysilicon as it is is not really doped heavily. So, its resistivity will be large. Now, in the next step when you create the source and drain regions the polysilicon will get doped heavily. So, in this case since it is a n channel device your source and drain will be n type. heavily doped n type. So, when you are creating these n plus layers from the top this polysilicon region also will get doped by this particular n plus diffusing atoms. So, here in this particular process the polysilicon is going to become n type at the end of this step. So, this is the so called source or drain. Now, you have to make contact to the source and drain using metal, but you will see that if you make a contact right on top of this if you put metal that metal will get shorted to the gate. So, you have to isolate the metal contact from the gate electrode. For this purpose what is done is an oxide is grown on the top of this. Now, at this point we must uh, distinguish between two types of oxidation. One type of oxidation involves passing oxygen at high temperatures of 1000 to 1200 degree centigrade over silicon. Then what happens is a part of the silicon surface uh, part of the silicon on the surface will react with oxygen and get converted into silicon dioxide. So, the silicon required for silicon dioxide formation will be taken from the substrate. On the other hand you can have another type of oxide that is deposited this involves passing chemical gases over a substrate which is raised to about 600 degree centigrade. So, temperature of this oxidation is not that high and then the gases react with each other and the product of this reaction is silicon dioxide which de gets deposited on the silicon wafer. So, this type of oxide is called CVD deposited oxide. So, what we are doing now here is we are depositing an oxide using the CVD technique. So, now when you do that this is how your device will look. So, this is the field oxide, this is the gate oxide and now you are depositing the CVD oxide on the top of this. Now, the next step will be to etch this oxide in these areas where you want the contact. Now, please note the n plus region is already there. So, by lithography what will be done is the oxide will be removed in this region above the n plus regions.
So, something like this. And now, to make the metal contact, a metal layer will be grown on the top of this. And the final step will be the etching of the metal from unwanted areas, so that you have contact to the n plus regions. So, when you etch out the metal, it will look like this. So, this is the metal. They are the metal contacts. Now, sometimes students have a doubt that how do you make a contact to the poly. So, to understand how you make a contact to this poly, you should look at the top view. The top view looks something like this. So, this is your source and drain. and this is your poly. So, you see the poly is extending out of the gate region. Now, this oxide that is shown is present on the top of this here. So, when you take a cross section here, you will see this structure, but here this oxide is not there. So, the oxide is present only up to some region here. So, this is covered with oxide, but here there is no oxide, the oxide is removed so that you can make a metal contact. So, that is the sequence of fabrication steps used to make the MOSFET. We must emphasize that some steps which are important have not been shown in our description so far. For example, in this region, you do a doping to adjust the threshold voltage of the device. This is a critical step which we did not show, because if you want to show the all these steps, then process looks very complicated. The theory that we develop will be assuming a simple MOSFET structure in this first course. In the next class, we shall discuss the current voltage characteristics.